Hello everyone and welcome to a week of Linux news for the 9th of October 2016. Starting off with the news this week, we have a warning to Fedora 24 users. Do not run the DNF update inside GNOME, KDE or any other graphical desktop. So there have been several reports of people getting duplicated packages and kernel updates not working. And what appears to be happening is that a DNF update process can cause a crash in GNOME or X. So it appears to be affecting other desktops as well, like KDE. So when the crash happens, the update process is killed and does not complete cleanly, which is why you get duplicated packages and other odd results. So they're working with one of the reporters right now to investigate and hopefully get the issue fixed. The KDE Plasma 5.8 long-term support has been released this week, and I've already done a more in-depth review of it. A link is in the description. Ubuntu 16.10 Yakti Yak will ship with an optional Unity 8 session. I'm surprised they still haven't gone for Unity 8 as the primary desktop. I've seen they've done some improvements to the Unity 7 desktop. So there's not long left until the final release, and right now you do get the option to log into Unity 8 at the login screen. Keeping with the theme of Ubuntu 16.10, Softpedia have done an article on the new wallpapers that are available. Let's have a quick look through. So Wanaka Tree, close up of a guitar, Yala Mountain. Wow, that looks incredibly detailed there, doesn't it? Lorengar by Night, nice. Alien Wing, <laughs> what, what, what is that? I mean, it's, it's obviously a plant of some sort. It's not an alien life form at all. I, I presume it's not. Linus Torvald having yet another rant. He has admitted that buggy crap made it into Linux 4.8 kernel. Devs have no effing excuse to knowingly kill the kernel. <laughs> Dear, say it as it is. So Torvald isn't happy with the kernel contributor, Andrew Morton, who he says he's debugging with a known bad use of bug on. Okay, I'm not a kernel developer, so I don't have a huge understanding of all this, but uh, Linus's reaction to all of this. I've ranted against people using bug on for debugging in the past. Why the expletive does this still happen? Tovold writes, pointing to a 2002 post to the kernel mailing list outlining how to do bug on. He later adds, so excuse me for being upset that people still do this. <laughs> More expletives almost 15 years later. The trouble is it's made it into what it should be considered a stable version of the Linux 4.8 kernel. And I think another update has just come out again already, but it's not featured in this news story. The new Dell XPS 13 Developer Edition is now available in Europe and the United States. To be honest, I hadn't really realized it was this easy now to get Ubuntu on a Dell laptop in the United Kingdom. I knew it was available in some other countries, I'm thinking particularly India, but in the UK and Europe. And sure enough, when I've gone over to the store, I've, I've not done a huge search around Dell, but I think I came across the item here. So XPS 13 Developer Edition, Intel Core i7 Ubuntu Linux 1404. Okay, view the details. And it says the product is currently unavailable. Bit of a security related article this time, the short life of vulnerable DVR connected to the internet. Most devices connected to the internet these days aren't maintained and monitored personal computers. Instead, their devices often not understood as computers, but as things, giving rise to the term Internet of Tat, I mean Internet of Things, or IoT. And over two years ago, Sands reported on the vulnerability with open telnet servers on certain devices, and with trivial passwords as well. And to have Telnet open to the internet is pretty fatal, really. Telnet is a completely unsecure terminal login and control for the system. So while some of these firmware updates have been available for a while, the users haven't necessarily implemented them because they're probably too clueless to, especially if they're leaving the device open on the internet. So the recent high-profile distributed denial of service attack has actually come from Internet of Things devices, particularly old DVRs and cameras. So they did a test of how bad is it to expose DVR to an internet connection. So Dr Ulrich captured all the packets in and out of the system and kept watching to make sure it wouldn't be used to attack other systems. So the sad part is, he didn't have to wait long. The IP address was hit with Telnet attempts pretty much every minute, Instead of having to wait a long time to see an attack, 
The problem was the DVR was often overwhelmed by attacks and the Telnet server stopped responding, so it had to be rebooted every few minutes. And that's a graph of the connection attempts per minute over a one hour period. <sighs> and reading further through the article you get an idea of what commands have actually been run on the device. Shocking. And the more devices that get infected, the more the attacks spread around because each device infected is now scanning for more devices and so on and so on. You just get a... Now some of the Linux distros that have been released this week. We have Superb Mini Server. I like the little mascot there. It looks really cute. So Superb Mini Server is based on Slack. And as the name says, it is built more for server devices. They do seem to mention torrents quite often on their internet site. So most of the administration is done for a web interface. But there is a KDE desktop available, for example, as shown in this picture. Well, KDE Neon 5.8 has been released, and I've successfully upgraded my old KDE Neon 5.7 system into 5.8. KDE Neon is based on Ubuntu 16.04 long-term support, and they're always continually updating the KDE desktop, so you always get a bleeding edge desktop on top of a solid base. NixOS 16.9 has been released. I'm going to be honest, I don't know anything much about this. I can see they use the Nix package manager, but as for anything much else, I really don't know. I couldn't find much about it. And now to a bit of terminal love. Bit indirect though, this one, because the article was why good sysadmins use Markdown. And the article is more about the simplicity of Markdown scripts. Yeah, I've used a little bit of it within GitHub, but I've not really had a huge understanding, and I, I don't know, it's, although it's simplistic, I've not found a huge amount of help on it. But anyway, I came across this terminal command to use Python to convert a Markdown script into HTML. Didn't know that feature existed, so python-m markdown, name of the file, and the name of the file you want to convert it to. So that was a look at the week of Linux news. If you liked the video, please share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. I shall see you all later.